It's dripping, Devin. Yeah, you're. Yeah. Use those moosels, boy. All right. <laughs> Come on, baby. Welcome to my life. Welcome to my life. Yeah. On the bright side. Yeah, this music here became my only lifeline. Think I'm going crazy. I'm not in my right mind. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue our work on the Gator today. So we're going to pick up where we left off last time. Got Gavin here, he's ready to do some painting. Check out the difference in the roof where we got a little bit of paint on before we ran out of spray paint. So Gavin's going to finish up. Doing some spray painting. <laughs> no, it's dripping, Devin. Yeah, you're putting it on a little too thick, bud. Let me see it. Let me it see happened. It. Okay, okay. You're terrible. Not good. No, really. See how you did like a little spurts like Michael's doing? I'm fine, Dad. My fingers aren't strong enough. <laughs> I continue to find little issues. So I started looking around at the brakes because the brake pedal goes all the way to the floor. And I found this brake line. It's coming out of this where the, the brake uh, little reservoir is. It is broken. And I'm pretty sure it attaches to this little piece right here after I kind of traced it. And there's a broken piece that I could not get off. I've got to continue to work on that. So I bought some more tubing and I'm pretty sure that's what just got delivered. So this is the new tubing. Since it was missing the steering column nut, I went to the store and just tried to guess what size. And I actually got one of each. I got a standard and a metric. So that's standard. That's not working. So let's hope the metric works. Oh shoot, are you kidding me? What? Actually, it may actually be the right size after all, but I've noticed I may have messed up the threads in the process of trying to get the steering wheel off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can clean up the threads a little bit. <laughs> after cleaning up these threads, the, uh, the metric nut kind of goes on. Oh sweet. Thread it on there now. All right, that worked. The other day when I was trying to get it into gear, it just wouldn't. It didn't even feel like it was going into forward or reverse. I tightened up that back lever on the back. I'll show you in just a second. And since I did that, now the gear lever is pretty tight. So I'm gonna try to crank it, but I'm a little nervous because I don't think the brakes work. So we're gonna roll it out put it in the street, give us a little bit of room so I don't destroy something in the garage and see if I can get it to go in forward or reverse. Mm. See if I can get it in gear. Okay, well that's an improvement. I'm going to adjust this lever a little bit. Maybe I can get it in gear. It's just so happy. It's like an end. <laughs> so this is that lever that we connected the, the transmission cables to. So that's the nut that I tightened up. So we're going to loosen a little bit. Mike and Jay, loosen that just a little bit. Trying to go in yeah, gear. That's what I was saying. I was trying. Got to do some troubleshooting and see. It's trying to at least do something, which is better than it was, but it's very hard to, to try to get it into gear and then you can feel it kind of slipping. So it may actually have something to do with the clutch. So that may be my next option is to mess with the clutch. Um, that or either mess with the tensions on the transmission cables. So I'm gonna troubleshoot. 
I'll be back. Well, we adjusted the cable some, we adjusted that lever some, and still really nothing. So I'm thinking it's probably the clutch. So I'm gonna have to research a little bit. I do remember seeing a YouTube video about the clutch on these. I think there is an issue with them. So I'm gonna check that out and may have to dig into that. But in the meantime, back to other projects. Gavin's gonna sand down where I'd put it on the inside of the top and then put a coat of paint on it. <laughs> It is a new morning. When we left off, I was doing some sanding. That was some pretty coarse sandpaper that I was using to kind of really get down there. So I'm gonna do a little fine sanding today, maybe a little wet sanding uh, to kind of do the finishing touch up paint. So here's the conclusion I've come to. The more I research, the more I've determined my problem is the actual clutch. And apparently these 550s and maybe a couple other models have an issue with the clutch. I think it's uh, something faulty with John Deere, but it's not any kind of recall, at least as much as I know. So I found a guy to take off your clutch, you mail it to him, and then he machines it and he'll get it right and it'll be even better than what a brand new one will be. So that is the goal. Today, we're going to take the clutch off and I think it's gonna be a little bit of an issue. You have never done this before. So we're gonna, me and the boys are gonna see what we can figure out. I'm gonna make a special little tool that I found online because the actual tool itself is like 40 to $50. It's not here locally. I have to go to another town or have it shipped. So I'm just gonna make one. Uh, I've got a couple of bolts that I think will work. Again, forms are great. So I'm gonna do that. Hopefully get that off, get it shipped to that guy and we'll see what it's like. So let's get to work. Taking this cover off. All right, so now we can see the clutch cover. So now I've got to figure out how to get that off. It's just Velcro, so Gavin's gonna change from the more coarse to the finer paper to do a little bit smoother sanding. Oh. Ah. A little dust storm. Yeah. Oh, I should have, I should have sunglasses on. I got Colin working on it now. I got, I think, two more bolts to get off. Can. Gavin's been vacuuming up a little bit on the cart. And then let's go see Micah doing some touch up on the, where we did the fine sanding. It's looking pretty good. Again, it's not gonna be perfect. But it's gonna look a whole lot better than what it did. All right, got Gavin now up underneath. My little mechanic that can get in the tight spots. He's getting up underneath that the clutch cover to get the last few bolts out. I, it, it's, it, there's something wrong with this bolt. It's stuck. One more bolt for the top part of the cover. <laughs> I'm hoping we can get it out with just the top part because if not, we've got to remove a lot more to get to the bottom cover. I just checked my service manual and I do have to remove that bottom skid plate. It's really hoping to avoid that, but it's gotta be removed, so we're gonna remove that, and hopefully then I can get to that clutch and get that out. So they're stuck. Yeah. Use those moosels, boy. Can't even get it on right now. Oh, hey, Cammie. You gonna get in the video? Tell everybody hi. Sorry, bro, that you lost 16 pounds. That's right. Cam had his checkup today, and he lost 16 pounds. The vet was very proud of him. He put him on a little diet. We let little Chunky get a little too big, didn't we, Chunky? <laughs> chunky monkey. His dog is always hungry. He will hit eat all day long, I think, if we let him. So he's doing good now. He's 62 or 63 pounds 63. now. So he's doing good. Although he does have an ear infection, we've got to get that taken care of. Yeah. Our next little project, we're going to make 
the clutch removal tool that's like 50 bucks and we're gonna make it for just a few dollars. So you get a half inch hex bolt. I believe I got a five inch hex bolt and we're gonna cut off and make just a smooth little like bolt, I guess. I'm gonna let Micah use our cut off tool and he's gonna do our cuts. All right, Micah, so you remember how to use this? Yeah. All right, we have our bolt locked in. It's gonna cut right behind that little head and we're gonna cut that off. That is a grade eight, so it's gonna be pretty hard. All right, go. Mikey just learned an important lesson. I just told him that that tip was gonna be hot and he touched it anyways, thinking the other side wouldn't be hot, but the whole thing heats up so much that it was extremely hot. He touched that little nut. All right, so we got that one cut off. Now we're gonna cut the threads off so that we have just that smooth shaft. All right, who's gonna cut? All right, how are those bolts coming? How many you got? One left. One left, all right, I love it. And it's the one that doesn't feel like it's spinning. So here's the clean shaft that is left after we cut the threads off and the head off. And this is the part that we're gonna use in combination with the other threaded bolt. All right, I got my little mechanic down underneath. Now that that skid plate is loose, he's able to get to bolts on the bottom clutch cover. I got it. All right, good job. You doing good, Gab. Last one. I can get this one off easy by hand. Oh shoot, I just tightened it. Gavin got the last bolt out, so this is now loose. The service manual said is that bottom cover is not gonna be able to come out until the clutch is actually pulled out. So now I've already loosened the clutch bolt. What was the point of me doing that? Well, because we have to, you'll see in just a minute. So here's the little clutch bolt, it's out. And you take this little piece out as well so that now I can get the clutch removal tool in to free the clutch. Starting to get dark on us, but here's the, the shaft, the smooth shaft from the half inch bolt that I cut. And then this is the actual bolt that I will use in combination with that. And this is, we got it from Tractor Supply. It is a grade eight, nine sixteenths, four inch. So we're gonna take this out of the package and what it'll actually look like is like this. And that's what the actual tool looks like that costs 50 bucks. So we just saved ourselves a lot of money. So you slide this part in first. All right, so we'll take the shaft, put it in. And then it's important it said to use some anti-seize lubricant. So I'm gonna put that on the threads of this bolt so that when I start threading it in, it won't damage it when we undo it. Silver paste. I really don't know how much I'm supposed to put on here, but I'm just gonna lube this thing up good. Might as well. That's pretty good. So we're gonna give that a try now. Sure. I wonder why that whole thing's turning. Jeez, I don't know, man. I don't know what else to do. Gavin and I have continued to try to get this clutch thing off, and I've tried to use manual force, but it spins, and I, I can't seem to wedge anything in there to stop it. I used that impact hammer that I had, that DeWalt cordless, not strong enough, I'm thinking. I'm a little nervous. Did my homemade removal tool, is it not working? But I just think I'm not having enough uh, power to turn it. So I've been searching my garage and I finally found my air compressor impact gun and I think it'll be a good bit stronger. And I'm hoping with this force, I'll be able to get it off. So I'm about to crank up the air compressor and let's pray this works. <laughs> All right, got the pressure. Let's see what we got. Come on, baby. Do your thing, do your thing. 
All right, good morning. Last night I used the impact wrench, nothing. So I went back and was just kind of trying to look on the internet and saw that some people said, use the impact wrench, get it as tight as it'll go, and then hammer the, the pin in and see if that releases it. So I guess I'm gonna try that. So that didn't work. All right, well, uh, I've got to brainstorm a little bit, figure out what to do next. So here's what I've decided. I had to come to, to Harbor Freight to get some stuff anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a heavy duty impact wrench. Started thinking about it. The one that I have is a pretty lightweight. I don't think it's really putting that much torque on the bolt. So before I go to extremes and do other things, I'm gonna get a heavy duty impact wrench to put a little bit more pressure on it, see if that works. If that doesn't work, uh, then I've gotta do some other things. But back in just a minute. All right, I got the goods. So I went with a 800 pounds of torque. I think the one I have now, I couldn't find it, but I'm thinking it's only probably 200 to 250 probably max 300 uh, so I wanted to go ahead and get one that was at least double praying this one works and then I also was wanting to get this cable finder I saw uh, a guy using this I have so many just random wires on the gator that I'm not sure where they go and trying to especially get the um, the electric dump working there's some wires there that I it's hard to trace so I'm gonna try to use this to track it down and then the other thing that I needed was the flare kit to do the double flares on the brake lines so get my tools get back to work all right here comes the moment of truth all right earthquake let's do it I did it hot diggity dog yeah it just didn't have enough torque now that I had the torque, man, like maybe one second that thing popped off. Whew. Thank you. All right, Earthquake. Good purchase right there, baby. And there she is. Got the clutch, time to box it up, ship it off, put a check, return address. Box it up, mail him a check, send it off. He'll get it in a couple days, work on it for a couple days and then get it back. So hopefully the turnaround time is pretty quick and hopefully that solves my problem. In the meantime, plenty of other little projects to be doing on the Gator, so we're gonna work on some other stuff. Time to work on the brake line. So I have an estimated amount of tubing that I think will be fine for the little run. Have my little pipe cutter. Gonna get a good clean cut. Just tighten it down and then spin it. Don't wanna, there it goes. Good clean cut. All right guys, time to actually start flaring this thing. And this is like my third or fourth try. It looks easy, it is not as easy as the videos look. But there's some great tutorials out there. You can go check YouTube for that. This is not a tutorial because I'm already messing it up multiple times. Partly I think you have to get this height just right to make it bend and it's gotta be completely level. We're gonna hope that this, uh, I think this is maybe four, five, I don't know. Let's see if this one will work. Looks level. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about this one, guys. I think this one's it. Let's see what we got. I think that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna do the second part. You take the little anvil out, and then you just twist this part. Maybe that's it. Oh, suck, it doesn't look very good. It's the best one I've done yet, though. Let's take it out and take a better view. I mean, it's pretty decent, but it's not exactly centered. It actually mushroomed it off the side. So with the tip on, it actually looks pretty decent. But you know what, guys? I'm gonna give it another go. I don't think that's good enough. 
Let's try it again. Dang it. It's off center again. That thing's hard to get center. You know what? That's not too shabby. And we're going to try it again. Such a big deal to get this thing just centered perfectly. All right, I'm done. Uh, that was a failure as well. So I'm just giving up tonight. I just don't have the touch. We'll try it again on another day. So we're going to end the vlog here, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep watching. We'll keep working on this project. We'll see you in the next vlog, guys. Bye-bye. Welcome to my life, welcome to my life, yeah. Welcome to my life, welcome to my...